Okay, shalom, shalom. All we're gonna try this again. Uh, the last show, weird thing, my whole sound system went crazy. It just shut off. I couldn't speak, and then all of a sudden my camera took off. So I don't know what happened. But this is Mike Clark, the uh, aka the Rebel Preacher, and we are going to continue with Amar Russell. Uh, his book is right here, and it's the Illumined Gospel. And we're going to continue on because he was speaking on uh, Kabbalah about the tree of life being three-sided and, um, you know, different understanding, the right and the left, the judgment and mercy. And he was speaking about how we must come together in a balance. And so go on and pick up from there, Amar, as we continue on with this trip and journey we're on. Well, uh, like I was saying before we got crashed there, um, is uh, Kabbalah is actually an exact science. Right. Now, everyone knows, including my Christian friends that are in prophecy and that they're watching the world events today, um, they know that all the elites of this world are into Kabbalah. Right. Now, I came up to my own realization because I studied Kabbalah pretty deep. Right. And let me tell you, it's a beautiful science. And the reason why that the elites of this world are into Kabbalah right. is, is because it is a true science. Right. They're not into Kabbalah because it's not true. They're into Kabbalah because it is true. Right. In the United Nations, they even got these Kabbalistic symbols all over the place. And because if you study Kabbalah and you're sincere about it and you're not afraid, it shows you the whole fall of mankind, how we fell into duality. Right. Separation between right. the right and the wrong and the light and the darkness and the good and the bad. and The, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it split. And so when you're down into that lower and you're imbalanced, if, if you're still caught in that lower husk of the cleepoths, that right. is the, lo there the you lower, go. that's the word, those lower shells on the Kabbalistic right. tree. If you're caught in that judging evil and pointing your finger and saying, those people are evil, then you're caught in duality and you're caught in separation and you will never be whole. No. And you, you will continue this nightmare of separation for, for as long as it takes for you right. to wake up. So the Kabbalah actually is an invitation. The Kabbalah itself is neutral. It's not good or evil. It's just a map. It's right. a map. Right. And it's showing you how that if you balance those polarities within yourself. Now, here's what I was saying in that last video. How do you balance the polarity within yourself? Right. You got to bring that darkness within you, the duality that's inside you. And everyone has these satanic inclinations, you know, because everyone has satanic inclinations. Apostle Paul called it the carnal mind. Right. And these carnal tendencies, the lust of the flesh and all these things, and this, this, the darkness that's in your subconscious mind right. has to be brought to the light. Right. I think Carl Jung said one time is, it's not about going, we must not discover the light. We must bring the darkness to the light. Correct. Exactly. That's, that's Kabbalah. Right. And so that, and that's what one must needs do in order to become whole. Right. He has to face his darkness. And as A Course in Miracles says, he has to learn to forgive. Right. And to heal those dark tendencies within himself by offering all your darkness to the light. Right. And that, that's what Kabbalah is really about. Right. Well, there's a, you know, there's totally misconceptions of Kabbalah because, you know, you have these pop stars and rock stars out here that, you know, they're not really, I shouldn't say this because I don't know their intentions, but many of them are just looking for uh, a system to help with their guilt and stuff of the lifestyles maybe that they're living. And they know Christianity and a lot of their main religions are out of it. So they're looking for something, but it is something there. And we were talking off the air as we were getting back on, and you were talking about if the governments ran like Kabbalah in the center, uh, not on the right and not on the left. I mean, there are times we have to go to the right and the left when judgment and, and there's mercies. But if we stayed centered, there we go. If we stayed centered, we wouldn't be having all these things that we're having in the world today. But there's too much greed and power, too much ego out there that wants to rule and reign over man that we can't stay consistent in the center. We have to live on the extremes, have to. That is so true, brother. That is so true. Now, by the way, that center is yeah. taught in, in Buddhism. Buddha represents right. that middle pillar. Right. See, there's three pillars in Kabbalah. There's, there's two pillars on each side, which serve like an, a positive and a negative, which are right. the polarity. 
um, everybody knows we're in a polarity system. This is a polarity system. We're in a giant right. battery. The universe right. is a battery. And now Buddha represents that neutralizing force in the center. They call it the middle path in Buddhism. They call it the middle way. Right. And that, there's a reason why they call it the middle way, because it is, in fact, the way of enlightenment. Well, didn't, Jesus, didn't Jesus talk about that also? He sure the narrow did. road? He sure did. <laughs> he sure did. And that's when I wrote the Illumined Gospel. I, I, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, or God is talking through me, right. about how to live that middle way or that straight and narrow path. Right. Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way because it's right, right between that Kabbalistic tree. And right. by the way, everybody that's against Kabbalah, your Bible is full of it. <laughs> Especially the teachings of Jesus. Yes. Like the, the whole Lord's prayer is Kabbalistic. Right, <laughs> right. Well, the, even, even the way he taught repentance, even the way he taught, which is Teshuvah, all of this stuff has been taken out of its Kabbalistic concept and brought down to a dualistic as you said a dualistic yeah. concept that makes it an absolute when it's not an absolute the way he's teaching it and you cannot take kabbalah out of what jesus was saying it can't be separated that is true that is true and you know Kab kabbalah was around long before the time of jesus and if there were a historical jesus i'm not saying it was or wouldn't because i don't know i wouldn't there right but nonetheless he would have said so, he would have said something against it. I would think so. There's nowhere in the New Testament where Jesus says, "Stay away from Kabbalah, Kabbalah bad." <laughs> you know, he didn't say. <laughs> and the thing is, Kabbalah was around long before Jesus, back in ancient Babylonian prehistoric yeah. Mesopotamia. It was before Judaism. Before Judaism, where do you think the Jews got it? Right, right. They got it was around long. In fact, the matter is, Kabbalah is probably the earliest spiritual uh, religion or path ever known. I agree. And, and I think everything kind of branched out from Kabbalah. Right. Really. Yeah. Out of the extremes. Out of yeah. the extremes on the both sides. They couldn't stay centered. So that, that's an interesting point because you're right. A lot of, if you say Kabbalah, especially in the Messianic Hebrew roots, you're automatically a Satanist. And they, it's funny how they tie uh, Kabbalah to Satanism. When there may be a little truth in that, not as there far is. as the Satanism we're thinking today of a of a devil fighting against a God, but like you mentioned earlier, there is a darkness and there is a light, and our we're to bring the darkness to the light. So yeah. in aspect, there is a Luciferian concept maybe within Kabbalah. There is. You know, I actually had to come to terms with this um, after studying with my good friend Brother Wayne over at the yes. Order of the Crescent. Yes, yes. He, he, He's a self-proclaimed Satanist. Yes. Now I'm not. Yeah. And but but we're friends. He's right. A good, he's a good friend of mine. We talk on the phone. I love him. I, I listen love to him, him all the time. Me. He right. loves me. Right. <laughs> it's like, but so he he tells me everything. It, there is a left hand path of Kabbalah. Right. There is. Right. But but it's not all that. There's a lot more to Kabbalah. Right. Again, Kabbalah is like a road map. Right. It's neither good or evil. It's okay. neutral. Right now, you can use the the knowledge of that roadmap to set up uh, points where you can rob people. Right, or or you can set it up where you can help people. You know, right. you can use that map for good or for for bad. You know, right. it's just it's like it's like neutral. anything, really. Yeah, yeah, like anything, like the body. Right, the body's neutral. Kabbalah is neutral. It's just a map. Right, and then of course, uh, Kabbalah doesn't do anything. No. In other words, you. It's just a map. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Sephirotes are just maps and they're attributes, really. They're more of attributes of the creator and stuff like that. And you're right. If you base your whole life on Kabbalah, I don't know. I mean, it would be, I guess, if you stay on the center, it'd be okay. But there's really no religious expression without, you know, within that, is what I'm saying. There's no religion. Yeah, that's true. It is universal because right. you can you can find Kabbalah in every religion. Oh, yeah. Even, even Gnosticism and Kabbalah, they feed off of each other. They're one. Yeah, yeah they're one. And, and Jesus, I mean, Christians don't even know it, but they're practicing Kabbalah every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. You are the so, light of the world. Do not yeah, take your life. I will on them. earth as it is in heaven. You know? <laughs> they practice in Kabbalah every day. They don't even realize it. And don't have a clue. But yes, Satanists do use Kabbalah because right. it's, a it's a perfect map. Why wouldn't right. they use it? 
<laughs> right. Exactly. Especially when you're bringing the darkness to the light. I know a lot of them believe we're bringing light to darkness, but really, in, in truth, we are bringing the light, the darkness into the light and exposing, with, especially within ourselves, what we're doing. That is beautiful. That is yeah. beautiful. I have no problem with darkness no. because that's where we're at. And actually, darkness is, is uh, it's the mother. Right. In, in a lot of these paths, the left-hand path is not evil, what people think. No. Um, I guess you could make it evil. Sure. But most left-hand path people are some of the sweetest people I've ever met. <laughs> you're right. And they're very, and they're real too. They'll tell you exactly, there's no hug and hide in the pack. They're going to tell you straight out like it is, and you may not like that. It may not be comfortable, but it's true. But you yeah. know, an, another thing that you were mentioning too about the path and, and the darkness and stuff of that nature is, is we've got to become comfortable with the fact that even within ourselves, within, you know, I believe we're in the matrix is what I believe. I don't believe any of this really is assimilation kind of. And yeah. a good illustration is, is when I learned to drive my car, uh, I just didn't get in my car and go take the driver's test and get my license. I had to take months. My daddy took me out daily and scared the but Jesus out of that man driving and stuff like that. And then finally, when I got to a point, I got my license and I'm still learning today driving, even after all of these years and religions a lot. Many people will say you just accept Jesus's blood and you are perfected and you're saved. Or if you follow Halakha, you're saved. Or if you're Islam, you pray three times a day, you know, you're saved. But in fact, to me, this is a simulation that we're practicing over and over again to get this thing right. And I know that's a, it, it hurts a lot of people's feelings at times, but I don't know how long it'll be till we reach perfection or till we really truly understand our divine purpose upon this earth. But it really bothers a lot of people to realize that you will never have all of the truth in this simulation that we're living. We're learning, we're growing, we're changing, we're teshuva. But if the fact is, is we, we my lifetime, I probably will never accept the, the Zen, the reality that I know where I'm at, that it, we're still doing a simulation. We're still training and learning about this whole situation. That's right, brother. If you look, um, what if you? What is it that you're learning every day? I mean, every day. Look at all your life from the time you were adolescent to childhood right. to the teenage years. What is the one thing that you have always been challenged, challenged with, and learning? It, is it not love? Yes. It, you know. And the understanding, understanding and practice of love, because in this world that we live in today, I don't think love can be comprehended when I'm watching the TV shows that I'm watching that, you know, the wow. perversions of love, the, uh, 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 the way parents are raising children today, man, if they live back in my days and you were in Kmart, you did something wrong and you, you got your rear end whip right there. Well, today that's considered abuse, but my parents wanted to instruct me on the ways to behave and if it was in pu if it was in public you got discipline in public so we don't even understand the correctness of love that the creator's trying to give us at sometimes and you're right it's something that we will continue to wrestle with here that's true that's true and i would say and the Illumin gospel is all about this brother yes it's yes the journey from fear to love right and if you notice like i said in your childhood everything you've ever experienced in life Somebody wronged you and they come over and they say, brother, I'm sorry, forgive me. Right. And now you have a choice to say, no, I don't want nothing to do with you, man. You know, <laughs> or, <get> you. <laughs> or you right. can say, no problem, brother. Come on in. I love you. You know, that's what you're here for. It's right. The, the little things, you know, I, um, I, I talk a lot about spirituality. I talk a lot about big ideas right. because there are universal principles that will help you balance yourself in harmony with your, with your soul, right? which is what Kabbalah really is. And that's right. what the Illumin Gospel is all about. The Illumin Gospel is about standing at the top of that Kabbalistic tree in Kether and, and experiencing <laughs> God every moment of your life. Just, that's it. There's that's no the need to play around with duality. It's, right. You know, good and evil are relative, right. both, both good and evil. You know, Christians want to be good, you know, right. and the truth is when you're awake, you don't care about being good or evil. You just want to be in God. Right. And then that becomes the law of your life. Right. 
Well, that's one thing I really appreciate in your teachings. And people need to go to his channel. It's Amar Russell on YouTube. You need to go because one thing he does is, is he takes away the guilt. You know, he tries to get yeah. you forget this, forget the negative, forget the past. And he did a show. Um, I don't know if it was this weekend. My days are cut. But somebody had written in with the bad, was going through a bad situation or something. And you really poured your heart out with that about suffering and, and really caring and, and, and lifting each other up. So that's one thing that I see that love does is when we really get to that Zen moment of communion yeah. with the creator, that I even if you do me wrong, I realize that this realm, it doesn't really matter. And plus, Amar, when I look at somebody and instead of criticizing them, I realize that same divine spark is within them. Yeah. And that when I call out them in, at the anger and hatred, I'm really speaking against the creator at that point. That is so true, my brother. And you're crucifying your brother. Yes. yes. See, the crucifixion is not about Jesus hanging on a cross. Yeah. You know, I mean, if he did or he didn't, I mean, it's yeah. wonderful. Right. But you are crucifying your brother every time you see him as a guilty body identity. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you see, if you see your brother as a body, you see, I have to look past the body of brother Michael and right. see that pure consciousness behind his eyes and identify with that. Right. It, it doesn't matter what you've done in this world uh, it, or what prison you were in. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. Right. Because I know who you are. Right. And by the way, that's love. Yes. Love, love. Is, is recognizing that divine spark. Right. Love is not, I love you, man. You know, uh, I love you as if you do this for me, or I love you. <laughs> I love you in these conditions. <laughs> you hardly ever see real love no. on television no. or anywhere else. No. Most people don't have a clue what real love is. Real love is spiritual. It's it's spiritual vision. Right, exactly. And you know, if we if we really studied and learned this concept of love, war would be gone. Uh, we would not be, you know, I don't know that'd be totally gone with the human ego, but I believe a lot of the conflicts would be settled because we would look at each other and realize, you know, we're being played here. Uh, you're a Palestinian, I'm a Jew. Really, we have no problems whatsoever, but the powers to be want us to be in conflict. Or in America, the racism between, they say, of Asians and, and the African Americans and the whites. Dude, I get along with it, all of them. I don't. I really don't have a concept, a problem with any race per se in this country. So, I mean, I believe if we overlook this thing, a lot of our conflicts in this world would pretty much disappear. You know, and that is so true. You know, if two sages, like if a Buddhist uh, sage was walking on a dirt road in Georgia. Right, <laughs> they would be. And met another Christian sage or right. a Christian mystic, who, who was walking on the same road, both of them would just silently share that. Yes. Pure, that recognition. Yes. That you are free and I am free. Let's have food, brother. Right. Let's, let's, let's get around the campfire and love each other. They would. Well, when you look at great Hasidic masters within Judaism, <clears throat> Baal Shem Tov, uh, uh, Snearson, I mean, we'll use any of them. I don't care. They had a relationship with Sufi, they had a relationship with Christian mystics because it ultimately they realized that it's above dogma. Now you'll never get dogma. will ever, never will agree with each other. Judaism and Christianity will never get along. Islam will never get along with each. But when we rise above that and we're looking, like you said, from Kevin yeah. down, we see a whole different picture. We look from the bottom up. We should be look, trying to look from the top down. So we should Beautiful. be doing. Beautiful. That's it. You got to get up there where Keith there is. Yeah. And it's effort. By the way, that's the all-seeing eye. That's Keith. all. Yes. <laughs> and when, they, when these Hollywood people are doing the all-seeing eye, I'm sure that the Hollywood producers are all Kabbalists. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they are. You know, the yeah. actors probably don't even know what they're doing. But maybe some of them do. I don't know. But yeah. but that's where your all-seeing eye comes from, is that right. Kabbalah. Right. And what, what they're saying is we hold the secrets of Kabbalah right yeah. here. But when they don't, you they know, don't. <laughs> that you got to take that knowledge back. Right. But yes, brother, you got to get up there where the Kabbalist, where that all seeing eye is your eye. Right. In other words, where you see through the eyes of Christ. Right. It's the all seeing eye is Christ. That's that. And when you see through the eyes of Christ, then you're above the battleground. Right. And when you're above the battleground, then nothing down here 
children throwing rocks on the ground can't hurt you. No, no. <laughs> you're Because you're above the battleground and you now see with perfect vision. Right. And in that perfect vision, there's going to be love because that's what's revealed. Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. And I think that's a point that it, we all have to get to. And, you know, it, it's, I wish there was a self-help book. I wish I could say anybody who buys this book right here. <laughs> and, but if you don't apply the concepts to what he's saying here, you're just reading a book, gaining knowledge, not changing. What this book does to me, it, 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 it forces me to make decisions daily in my life. And I think that's the difference. Of, of Gnosis, of just learning and not applicating to your life and that of actually being on the journey. As you said, when you hit rock bottom, you started going to these places, experiencing this, this uh, these religions and stuff to learn the, the oneness. The same thing is true. You can read all the books you want in the world. If it doesn't change or challenge you to rise to that upper uh, positions within the tree, let's, we'll just use that. Yeah. Uh, you're, it's doing, you're, you're really wasting your time because knowledge without application is to me, is just, it's ignorant. <laughs> really. know, it is. It, it, and ignorance is really why we do it because we don't know, No, you know, and, but I, I do want to say that the light, when I experienced the light, brother, right. now that's what I wanted to look for in right. every, in every situation, whether that be a Hindu temple, a Buddhist temple or a Sufi right. temple. And I wanted to find, so I got to, once you experience the light, right now you looking for the light in everything, right? You don't care about the dogma no more. No. You don't care. No, you don't care about who said water. Like I said, what kind of silverware mother Mary had in her cabinet, <laughs> you know, you don't care anymore. Uh, what kind of cross Jesus died right. on, you know, you only care about the light. He, he did say, I am the light of the world. Did he right. not? He did. And then he, he says, did. you are the light of the world. Well, what this is the illumined gospel. Right. That all things are light. Right. Light is animating everything. In other words, consciousness itself is light. Right. Light is consciousness. Right. So once you realize that, now you're looking for the light. Right. And so when you go into a church and there's no light, and they're just talking about the Bible and yeah. quoting Jesus and worshiping some screen up on a big church <laughs> altar. And then you just walk out because yeah. you're like, or if you go to a Hindu temple and they're just sitting around and, and they're not really experiencing the light, you walk right. out. Right. But it's the light that you want to look, hone in on. Right. Because that light is the light of Keter at the top of that Kabbalist. Right. It's God. It's God. Right. God is light. That is that is totally awesome, and I couldn't agree with you more. And that's where on my journey, that's where I have been also, is in learning this position of trying to rise above the conflict. You know, even in a storm and hurricanes, if you get up high enough above the clouds, you'll avoid the storm. And that's the same thing spiritually, you know, with this great reset coming on and, and the government's collapsing on us and, the, you know, everything, that we have to rise above this because it will drive you insane trying to i know that even studying light has pushed me to the edge sometimes because you find yourself your ego like what is truth what is truth what is truth and the same thing is true in life is you can really let yourself go crazy watching the news and we've got to rise ourselves up spiritually and that's where this book right here does so well of bringing these things down that's true brother and my good friend over at the order of the crescent he'd say no god is darkness Right. And, you know, there's some truth to that, because in Sufism, uh, the, the, the luminous darkness is also God. Right. And what I mean by that is that, like, when you go into meditation, for example, do you not go into darkness in Got your to. consciousness? Right Got here, to. usually. In, and right here, you in the third eye, usually, or in your mind, you start to experience light. Right. But that light comes out of the darkness. Right. Remember, in the beginning, God says, let there be light. Right. So there must have been some darkness before that. Right. Well, even when even in Kabbalist, I didn't mean to cut you off, but even in Kabbalistic understanding where it says that God had to basically shrink himself or basically create that, that there was darkness because there was a moment in time in which people didn't know. There's a moment that the creator's not known is what I'm saying. So, yeah, right. darkness was from the beginning. There's there's no doubt about that. And, and you know, we when we think of terms of light and darkness, we're thinking about, uh, you know, like light and dark, like a light bulb. Right. But that's not the kind of light and darkness we're talking about here. No, no. We're talking about a presence. Right. 
See, God is the presence of darkness as well as the presence of light. Right. And beyond light and darkness is a whole nother realm. And, and in Gnosticism, they call it the plumor, the real right. world. Right. Like you said, the light and darkness we experience here is an illusion. Right, it is. It's the matrix. Right. And it's the video game. Right. You know, like if you go to a theater at night, what, what what's two things you experience within a theater? There's light and darkness, right? That's the right. light from the projector and the darkness all throughout the room. Right. This world ain't no different. No. And we're experiencing all the images on the screen of consciousness are coming and going and everything else. Right. And the truth is the only thing real is the screen, which right. is consciousness itself. Right. Everything's appearing on the screen of consciousness. And you are that. And when you rest in consciousness itself, right. then you find peace. Right. And when you find peace, you're home. Wow. That is and, so true. And then if the great reset comes, which it's coming, right. it's coming, it's here. Uh, when this thing happens and they drop the food prices and the, the grocery stores might appear empty for a while. And the, I mean, I don't know, but yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. And right. then of course, um, the gasoline, you know, Boom. that's going to go, it's going to go. Right. And, uh, and if it all goes for a while, which is their plan, right. Which is to bring everything down to ashes. Right. So that they can like Phoenix, they're going to create a whole new world order out of that. Right. Well, now it's up to us to bring a new level of consciousness to that scenario. Right. And then, and then when it does come back up out of the ashes, it right. could be something brand new. We could all go home. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a situation we are at. A, we are definitely at, you, I think you said earlier, the Omega point, and we're yeah. there now. Yeah. Every prophet, every religion, I mean, every, even mystics, the mystics had prophecy. Right. Every one of them. And uh, the Nazarene Essenes from the Nazarenes, right. I read some of those on there. They pulled that from the internet. Right. But it was basically about this hive mind. I won't go right. into detail, right. but um, yes, uh, what they want is a technocracy, right. a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical technocracy right. where everyone's connected. Right. And um, the truth is, this may not happen the way they think. Because there is a battle between light and darkness at this time. And alchemically, this thing could be some, something totally different than anyone has in mind. Right. Absolutely true. Yeah. I, I, I live in miracles. You know, right. I mean, Every I'm expecting, um, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Every day I'm expecting a miracle, brother. I'm expecting a miracle out of this. This is no different than when you, when you face your, your, your mortal death. I right. mean, you're facing your death now through the through this great reset, brother. Right. You don't know it yet, but you're going to find out soon uh, that this is going to affect all of us. Right, definitely. And, is. And when you feel it and when you know it's happening for you, then don't be afraid. Right, because th there is a place of safety and security. Mm -hmm. Just go back into consciousness itself. Can nothing right. hurt you. You right. can't be hurt. You're right. Well, if you're a Doctor Who fan, think of the dialects. If you're if you're a Star Trek fan, think of the uh, Borg, and you'll truly understand the collectiveness that are wanting to take away individuality, take away everything, and you will be one with the system. Basically, is what he's talking about. So, if these are your these are the movies that I like, and that's what I get that from. We're in one. We're, We're in, in one. Science fiction, man. This is the Matrix. There ain't no doubt about it. It really is. It really is. But. Amar, I appreciate it. I'm, I, I'm glad we, you know, we got a chance to at least complete this thought that we started today. And yeah. I definitely want to have you back again because I think there's more we can pull from this. We didn't even, we didn't even touch 90% of anything else that you talk about on your channel, but that's, that's another time. But I do appreciate your time. And, and before we end, is there anything that you want to tell the audience? Yes, um, that everything we talked about today, brother, can be summed up in one word, Christ. And Christ is inside you and this this is the whole thing it's not real complicated it's not a, a real mystery it's that divine self or the divine spark right and that it divine spark is not somewhere far off right and your and your, your divine spark is already at one with god and so there's nothing to fear you can go into that true self of you right here right now you don't even need to read my book if you don't want to because i do <laughs> <laughs> you can do that um, or you can just sit and go into that true self of you and experience God there because it's simple as that. That's awesome. 
That's yeah. awesome. It's been a pleasure. And like I said, I feel like I've known you my whole life. So it's not, it's not been awkward whatsoever, but our journey is very familiar uh, going through the different phases that we did. You just took the, you got on your hands and knees and went there and I just studied it. So we're there at the same place, but Amen, I appreciate brother. your time and I appreciate right, it. And until next time, Shalom and have a fantastic day.